called Good Morning. It's about 8 a.m. And I don't really have anywhere to be today. Which is good. Because it's the first sunny day that we've had in a while. Back when I was building out my van, I my biggest anxiety about the future was that I would put all this time and effort and money into building this home for myself, only to find that I didn't like solitude. And in the first couple days being alone in the van, I thought that I was right. It felt alienating. I was in these strange places, being kicked out of campsites, not knowing anybody there, and feeling like I don't belong, which I think is probably a deep-seated fear that's just innate in being human. We're social creatures, and we want to belong to the group. But on the second or the third day of being alone, I noticed that the anxieties that I had had all seemed to melt away. And I was left with this sort of waking bliss. The more I set off on solo expeditions in the van, the shorter that time became between me leaving and feeling that bliss. I wasn't really quite sure exactly what it was that was making me feel this way. Perhaps it was the fact that I've always been an introvert and comfortable alone. But this was like a different kind of alone. Out in the middle of nature. Just you and the work that you find most fulfilling.
being alone and being enveloped in these beautiful natural places whenever I could get to them and I wasn't sleeping in a parking lot, that is. It allowed me to drop into this deep state of focus and creativity. I noticed that it's a state that I can only achieve when I'm alone. And not just alone, but alone for a long time. A couple of days at least. This state of flow and focus that comes from being alone and doing the things that I love in these places has become one of my greatest tools for waging war in my own work. And I don't think that I would be able to do what I do now without it. Environment plays such a key role on who we are and how we feel and what we become. We're all products of our environment to some degree, but I think we don't really realize how much so until we remove ourselves from those environments spend so much time at home or at work or with the same group of friends that we don't realize what it's like to be on our own in a strange place and how truly liberating that is. I get this eager sort of just glowing excitement whenever I'm on the road and pulling up to a new place that I've never been to before and I'm not beholden to anybody else's commitments or desires. I'm just there to be present and enjoy it and use it as a catalyst for being inspired in my own work. Being on the road isn't actually quite as lonely as you might think. Being in these places and being able to do things that fill you up allow you to be alone, but rarely lonely. And I think that you might be surprised at how many people you meet while you're on the road. It seems as I'm hopping around from place to place, I'm meeting friends all of the time. Far more often than when I was at home. You meet other nomads, other people who are out pursuing a non-traditional path, and you instantly have so much in common. And you often share many of the same viewpoints and perspectives on the world. And it kind of 
sets the foundation for what is an instant connection. Now, this is not to say that it's always wonderful. Nothing is always wonderful. I think what it is, is living this kind of way. It makes your highs higher and your lows lower. The good times are more frequent and more incredible. But the low points are lonelier, harder, more complicated. And this is just me speaking from my experience. And like I said, I'm an introvert. You may be someone who gains a lot of energy from other people and that's cool too. So take everything that I say with a grain of salt. And know that for every topic I make a video on, there could likely be hours of discussion on the same topic. So know that your mileage may vary, but don't let the fear of finding out keep you from trying something new. <laughs>